In random moments wedged between the hustle and bustle of daily life, we sometimes stumble upon a calm and serene moment. A moment when we are able to be mere observers of the beauty and oddity of reality as a living creature on planet Earth. It's times like this that makes us feel like we're just a character in a story called life. While entrenched in the state of mind, the world might feel as though it is nothing but a representation of something deeper, something that drives all life towards a common goal and destiny, one of both growth and sustenance. It's these moments in which we feel at one with nature. But what do we mean when we say we feel at one with nature or the universe? If you were to ask the great philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer that question, he would explain to you what he believed to be the true underlying nature of reality, the force that drives both sentient and non-sentient beings forward, a force that he called will. Although Schopenhauer died back in 1860, he left behind many books and essays that describe his ideas and presuppositions as to why he came to such a conclusion. And in this video, I will do my very best to summarize this philosophy found in a series of books titled The World as Will and Representation, to hopefully help you get a better grasp on reality and explain those odd moments of feeling at one with your surroundings. But before we move on, don't forget to like and subscribe to help encourage me to continue making what I believe to be important videos for those of you deep thinkers out there. But without further ado, let's get into it. According to Schopenhauer, the world shouldn't be considered anything more than just a representation, something similar to a dream. Although we know and are capable of perceiving about the world comes from our five senses and is regulated by our consciousness. And since our consciousness is part of the world and in a way was created by the world, it can't be the best benchmark for understanding what is real and what isn't. Rather, it makes more sense to view the world as being an environment full of information that we happen to be tailored to understand, which as a consequence helps us survive. Since the world is just a representation, Schopenhauer argues that there's no way to use the physical world alone as a means to understanding the true nature of it. Everything that we are able to see from the outside gives us barely any insight as to what's on the inside. All we can do is observe their trends and find a way to use it for our own means. And for the most part, that's all we human beings do. And perhaps for the average person, that's all there needs to be to it. But this video is for the curious individuals out there that demand a higher level of understanding as to the nature of this reality that we're stuck in. So that being said, there's one catch. We ourselves, individuals, the one that's making this video and the one that's watching this video right now is also a physical being in a world of representation. The cool thing about actually being a part of the world is that we have the unique insight into our own inner nature. It's our inner nature that causes us to move and take action and that action is represented in the world. Furthermore, us being synonymous with the world and more widely the cosmos gives us the unique right to assume that all other represented objects are endowed with the same essence that we have, albeit in various quantities. This essence is what Schopenhauer called will. In moments when we feel at one with nature, it's because we ourselves aren't so different from everything else. As Schopenhauer says, will appears blindly in every acting force of nature, and also in the deliberate conduct of man, and the great difference between the two concerns only the degree of manifestation, not the inner nature of what is manifested. Whether it's plants in the ground diligently pushing towards the surface, atoms compressing to the form of a crystal, gravity pulling the earth around the sun, or a human pushing through obstacles in order to achieve one's goals. Everything in the universe is endlessly driven by the force of will, and through this lens, our consciousness is nothing but the most efficient service of this force. On the other hand, the reason why we feel so at ease when engaging in acts such as being in the present or artistic contemplation is because for those short moments we have transcended the power of will. You see, the dark side of this phenomenon is that being driven by will is accompanied by a profound feeling of always wanting more and never being satisfied. Schopenhauer agrees with the Buddha that the root of suffering is our desires. His solution to this issue is also in agreement with the Buddha. He believes that the only way to escape suffering is to give up all of our worldly possessions and pursuits in order to achieve true peace and tranquility. While I agree with this notion, I personally don't believe this is the only way. I also subscribe to Friedrich Nietzsche's sentiment on ascension. By overcoming our fears, obstacles, and by living within our means and temporarily submitting to the power of will, we were able to reach a point in life when we were able to obtain everything that we need without giving up the benefits of modern life. This in a way nullifies our will and creates a feeling of contentment. By following the power of will mindfully and setting limits for ourselves, we are able to achieve peace without giving up everything that we hold dear, thus achieving freedom from will and uncontested oneness with the universe. In other words, true happiness. I hope this knowledge will impact your life in a similar way that it has for me. But with that being said, that's it for today's video. 
I hope you enjoyed it and added the knowledge to your own philosophical lexicon, and I'll catch you on the next one.